Hello, so today's video is going to be on Geiger counters and radiation detectors of various price ranges. This was a requested video by a couple of people. And basically it was, could I recommend a Geiger counter or whatever in a certain price range? So what I'd do, I'd sort of pick a couple from different price ranges to recommend them. Now apart from one I'm going to show you in this video, I'm mostly avoiding surplus in this video. Just simply because the price of surplus Geiger counters or you know radiation detectors really varies. The condition of them really varies. Um, and how reliable they're going to be really varies, you know, due to calibration and just how old the parts are in them. Because the problem I found with a lot of the old surplus detectors, not all of them, but a lot of them, especially the US based ones, is that quite often parts in them, even if they're working at the time you buy them, are very close to wearing out. So basically you'll have it for a bit, it'll seem fantastic, it works still, you think, oh that's great, this is a 60 year old Geiger or whatever, like the CDV700, it still works, then something burns out. And unless you're particularly good at electronics, you know, you might be quite frustrated with the idea of constantly having to, you know, um, repair bits, or sometimes it might even be an impossible bit to replace just due to you can't find a modern component of similar sort of tolerances and whatever. So that's why I'm avoiding those in this video, but of course if you're in the US or something, you've got your CDV in a local junk shop or something that's really cheap, but yeah, buy it, why not? Um, so anyway, the first one I'm going to recommend um, is the Kajo. Um, now this probably has a few different names. What this basically is, is it's a Chinese Geiger counter, but how it works, it's one of those little flatbed, um, sort of, what would you call it, sort of, you know, almost DIY Geigers, I've got one, I've done videos on it, where you have a Geiger Muller tube on a circuit board essentially, with a piezoelectric speaker and everything else. So what this is, it's that with a screen on and a couple of functions. Um, and the idea is that they're relatively cheap, so you know you get a working Geiger counter for not too much. So how these work, and it's definitely not that high in terms of microsieverts at the moment. Um, the only issue of this is this bit was meant to be sealed. I ought to put some black tape on here, certain light, and I think that camera light's doing it, um, is registering count. But anyway, um, the nice thing of this, you can have um, counts per minute or micro sieverts an hour. Um, and it also shows you an accumulative dose at the moment. It's got several alarm functions. You can get one of these for like the 30 to $50 price range, excellent. Just if you did what I did and drill holes to make it easier for beta radiation to enter it, you probably want to put some black tape over it. I'll do it after this video actually. Just that way it's not going to respond to light. Because these Chinese tubes inside are very sensitive to actual light. Um, and because UV light is actually technically ionising, I think UV light sets these tubes off for some reason. Which technically isn't incorrect, but it's not when you're wanting to measure nuclear radiation anyway. So that's this one, the Kajo. I'd recommend that if you can get one cheap. And of course, because they're brand new, essentially, they're guaranteed to work all the parts in you. Right. This is one that I've recommended a lot of times. The little mobile phone Geiger counters. They're not strictly Geiger counters, but how they work is you have them plugged into a mobile phone. And then all they do, basically, is use a little diode sensor to measure radiation. But they work in the same way as a Geiger counter in the sense that every time a radioactive you know, decay or particle hits it, it counts it. And then it uses a dose equivalent based on the counts. So I'm using it with a thing called Radmeter, um, which is quite good because it's very customizable. So I can open that up, for example, and then say, I want to do counts per minute. And you can see at the moment it's saying it's basically half a count per minute. These are responsive, and I think they actually take quite a lot of energy to max out. It's like 200 microsieverts equivalent on them, which is pretty damn good, considering these are like 20 to $30, 20 to £30 pound little plug-in things. Some of them are sensitive to touch, though, which is one thing. Um, so if I do that, I don't know if it's going to do it on this one. Yeah, there we go. See, the count per minute is shooting up because I'm tapping it. So some of them can be a bit vulnerable in that sense. Um, so that's that. Right, here's the surplus one I'm going to recommend because it's price range and not too much at the moment in the UK and they're very good. These are not Geiger counters, these are ionisation chambers. This is the one where I've got the bottom open so I can you can see it basically and you can use it with alpha radiation. So an ionisation chamber, even simpler than the Geiger counter, is basically where you've got something like a can or a box um, that's made of a conductive material. You've got a wire going in which is your positive, you've got the box which is basically a negative, and then as when ionisation, as in radiation, enters it, um, it you know detects the energy of it. The reason these are really good compared to Geiger counters, you know, there are disadvantages as well, is that these actually measure a realistic dose. So let's turn it on, because how these work is they actually measure the energy of the air inside them. Um, 
So when you turn it on, it will take a minute for the needle to stabilise. These are also quite sensitive to moisture, when that's one of the back you know, problems of them. But the really nice things with these is these are old British Mark II Radiacs that they retrofitted with new electronics um, and changed them from Ronkens to centigrades and actually did the proper number difference on them. So it doesn't, you know, isn't a 1-1 one -one conversion like a lot of them are. Um, but because in the UK at the moment these are often turning up in the 30 to 50 pound mark being wholesaled on, you can have a radiation detector that has quite a lot of history behind it because it's a retrofitted bit of old technology and it goes from 1 to like 0 to 3 centigrade, 0 to 30 centigrade and 0 to 300 centigrade. So, you know, um, in equivalent this goes up to well over 300 Rongen. So it's actually, this is more of a doomsday meter, but on the lowest scale, because you can open them up to alpha radiation, with uranium ore or something like that, thorium lamp mantles, whatever, you can actually see the needle move. Uh, I've demonstrated that in videos before, but these are really fun to play about with, are a lovely bit of history. Um, originally when the bottoms open, that would have like a bit of film over there, that was the beta shield, this bit is the, um, well that was to block alpha radiation or dirt getting in the chamber. This is the bit that would be flipped over, for example, so it was only, for example, you know, gamma rays could get through. That was your beta shield, and then that would be under a metal base plate at the bottom. Um, as said, you know, these are basically retrofitted devices that the British Army kept in service until, like, the early 2000s at some point. It might have even been as late as, like, 2010, or recently, because a lot of them are only turning up now. Maybe it was only in the last year or so they're actually retiring them. But some of them still have calibration stickers on, as you can see. Um, from fairly recently, as in this one was last calibrated in 2003. So, you know, if you wanted a working radiation detector um, that has quite a cool design and retro history to it, these are very cool. The, the downside is they're heavy and bulky, but you know, they are really, really fun. I know everybody I've recommended these to who's got one actually seems to really like these. I think part of that just comes down to how kind of retro sci-fi they are looking, because these are originally 1950s radiation detectors that they've just put new circuitry in. At some point, I'll probably do a video where I take a Mark II apart and the MD3 and basically show you how all the guts have changed in them. That is essentially just the outer shell that's the same. But anyway, that's the only reason I'm throwing this in there, just because at the moment in the UK, these are turning up on the surplus market, and compared to the old 1950s, sort of 1960s era surplus Geigers a lot of people get, or radiation detectors, these were like completely retrofitted in like the 80s or the 90s. So um, the electronics in them are fairly modern electronics, so they're probably not going to burn out in a hurry. So there's that. Right, now let's go into like the $100 plus range. Um, so here is a GQ GMC 500. There's a few different Geigers in this range. The, um, there's one that's more expensive than this and is a bit more thorough. There's this one and then there's like cheaper ones that have lower ranges. The reason I like this is it's got quite a few different settings. You can put the speaker on, you can set the alarm thresholds and all that. Um, so you can have the display in counts per minute, which is the true thing a Geiger counter reads, counts per second or counts per minute, as in counting. This uses two separate GM tubes, it uses a Chinese one with some black, basically, rubber over it, or plastic, that's to stop UV rays getting into it again, as said. Um, interestingly enough, I've noticed if I hold this at the right angle of the light, the count's going up, so, <laughs> there we go. So, um, there's that. So. That works on that principle, um, that it counts per minute, also shows you a micro ronk gun and, well, it's, oh, sorry, it's meant to be a milli ronk gun, but it's actually a milli rem um, on this, and um, micro sieverts. Uh, I think this one can go up to about 5 ronk gun, or um, 45 milli sieverts, something like that. It's got quite a good range on this one. Um, but the nice thing about this one is it's got a few different displays, if I change that over for you. So you can see that one, it's got this kind of display, then it's also got the... Um, I hold it that way. It's got the sort of text info display which you can customise. It's got the graphic mode where you can see like a bar chart of where the radiation has been, that's quite handy. It's got a food sample testing thing I've never bothered using on it and the large font mode. So yeah these, these are pretty handy just because they've got a lot of functions. Again they're not perfect, they have the error on these sort of thing where because it's got two different Geiger Muller tubes on it, you'll kind of run into the problem sometimes where something you've got that's radioactive sits between the two Geiger Muller tubes in terms of the sensitivity of them. So you have the issue where it overloads the low end tube, switches to the high end tube, and then basically doesn't really get a reading. That's a problem you actually run into with a lot of old analog Geiger counters as well, where they use two tubes to make them more versatile. It's a great idea, but you can find sometimes stuff that almost is a bit dangerous because it's, you know, 
tells you it's overloading a low energy tube, but then when you switch to the, you know, the super high dangerous radiation field tubes, it's not really hot enough to make that needle move. So, you know, you could be getting irradiated and not know it, but these are still good for what they are. Right. Last one, and you know, it's one of my personal favorites is the therapy. I am going to come up with a little complaint on this since last time I talked about it. And that is it's very difficult to clean it properly. Um, probably the same with that GMQ, it's not exclusive to the therapy. But as you can see, the radiation is definitely not that. The reason was, I put it in some puddles when we had that radioactive rain come down. Uh, some sort of radionuclide or sort of, you know, something radioactive got inside it. Um, and I've not been able to clean it out very thoroughly because it's very hard to clean the tube. The reason I like the therapy, and I've talked about it before, has a very, very high range. Uses one Soviet SBM20 derivative tube, I believe, which goes all the way on this model. It can count up to like in the sievert range, which is like hundreds of ronkens. So it's um, it's a very good Geiger in terms of you know low end, high end. Although as I say in the manuals, all these they become less and less accurate the higher the radiation goes. Um, calibrated on cesium 137. If I open the back, it has a beta tube. How it works is to normally access beta radiation. You open it up like that. And then it's got the um, sort of shielding on the inside of that. And how it works is there's kind of like lead wrapped around the Geiger Muller tube. So the only time you're normally getting um, beta radiation is with that flap open. The idea being the lead stops it. I found some beta sources at some angles still get in even with the thing closed. But it's a lot better than a lot of the Geigers, you know, where you can't actually do anything to stop beta radiation getting in if you just wanted to measure gamma. So anyway, there's therapy. As I said, only bad thing I can really complain about this is the the display is a bit limited and it's very difficult to clean, but that's not exclusive to the therapy. EcoTest, the company that makes this, do do some other Geigers that look very interesting. Um, but as I said, I've not got them currently. But yeah, there you go. There's my recommendation. So in this video, we've covered about thirty dollars all the way up to about two hundred dollars. Um, for what you're going to really de need to determine is what you need from a Geiger counter or radiation detector. If you just simply want one because it's cool and, um, you know, just so you can see it tick a bit higher than background, pretty much any of the low-end Geigers will do that. The problem the low-end Geigers run into is they start giving false readings or just overload. If you actually expose them to something like a radium aircraft dial, you know, they're, they're certainly not going to cope with nuclear disaster levels of radiation if... Um, you know, radium painted watch or something is going to overload them. But in terms of, you know, just telling you if it's background or if it's higher than background, they are fantastic at that, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just personally, as I get more into radioactive kind of um, detectors and everything else, I end up sort of, you know, wanting ones a bit more professional, which is one of the reasons I ended up buying a digital ion chamber, you know, that can cover something like... Um, micro ronkens to 20 ronken range um you know with a digital readout so you know exactly what you're being exposed to in terms of gamma radiation in the air fantastic but not something for beginners really anyway so i'll wrap that video up but yeah for most people i think the phone geiger little probes are the simplest thing because unless you've somehow ended up getting one of those apple phones that doesn't have a phone jack anymore which is completely stupid and no 3.5 millimeters those are fantastic if you just literally want to plug it into a phone and get a readout you know it does that fine and when I've tested them before, you know, you can get beta radiation to register on them through the little end bit. You know, they register gamma rays fine. They give a pretty close dose equivalent to other more expensive Geiger counters. You know, and they're pretty convenient. You can fit them in your pocket. Um, you know, as I said, all of these have advantages and disadvantages, even when you're going up to the Terra Q and like the GM500, whatever it's called, you know, price range ones. I don't think there's ever going to be a perfect Geiger counter or perfect radiation detector. But again, it, it depends what you want in one and you know the factors you want and again for a lot of people say you weren't concerned about background radiation but you did want to know if there was a nuclear disaster this would do that you know because again how these work is they basically are the ionization chambers you know that will detect if anything really bad's going on so you know you've got a lot of options it's up to you what you want to get of course but you know like i said the options are there and, of course, if you're interested in surplus Geigers, there's things like Polish DP60, uh, DP66s and DP75s, both of those I love. Although they're not as tough as the Soviet DP5 series. And then, you know, in the US you've got CDV700s, or if you wanted a higher range one, like that MD3, there's the 715s, um, which are iron chambers. You know, there, there's a lot of different stuff to look into. And you might also really luck out where you find out your nation did, um, you know, a random nation did a really good thorough radiation detector that's only recently been surplused in excellent condition you know and you get it for an amazing price um 
you know, but again, it's working out, I think, personally, what you would want in a radiation detector, just because I think a lot of people don't really know what they want from them, um, and then don't buy something that fits the goal that they want, um, or didn't know that they want, you know, like some who buys a CDV715 when they want to see the needle move, you know, with background radiation, sorry, that's not going to happen, but, you know, if, if you were worried about Doomsday and you had a working CDV715, then, you know, and you left it on permanently, then you started seeing the needle move, you know something's happened. Uh, whereas, for a lot of people, just a Geiger counter that can measure background and then tell them if something's going on that's a bit higher than background. You know, and the mobile phone Geigers, going back to them, work fine for that. Anyway, hopefully that's summed it up. I've waffled on for far too long, but there you go.